Okay, so what does this mean? Well, we're going to, you know, last time I talked about Schrodinger specifically uh, solving the puzzle of the hydrogen emission spectrum. So atomic spectroscopy, ooh, is this on timing? timer? Okay. So atomic spectroscopy give you line spectra, and these line spectra uh, were inexplicable. They, it showed that the electron had a particular energy that it could have and other energies it could not have. And this, this, this wasn't explainable with Newtonian physics. So de Broglie introduced the idea of standing waves and then Schrodinger developed the math to solve that spectrum. So today we're gonna to look at that math. So all of this math is from Schrodinger's paper, not, not exactly from Schrodinger's paper, but it's the same kinds of equations that he solved. But we're not gonna solve them today. It's gonna to take us a whole week. So next week we're gonna solve each of these equations Specifically in the lab, we're going to look at them in detail. And, and, uh, and so I'm just lying out now the integrals that you need to do and the differential equations that you need to do. And then we'll use our first and second semester calculus next week in the lab for you to do a few of those for two reasons. One, I want you to refresh your skills in calculus. It was a prerequisite after all. You know, I'd hate for you to have a prerequisite that you didn't use, right? It'll refresh your memory on that. Two, it'll show you how, at least for our particle in a box system, it's not that bad. You have like two integrals to do. Uh, you have one integral that's uh, integration by parts. And so we'll dust that off and use it, <laughs> okay? And then we do a second derivative, okay? So it's, it's just not too bad. We're dealing with cosines and sines. And we have like a couple of trig substitutions. So that's it. That's really not like this enormous when you think, oh gosh, calculus. Yeah, well, calculus was a whole semester of horror, okay? This is just a few problems. And with that, you can actually predict the spectrum. So let's kind of run this backwards. Instead of starting with the wave function, let's start with the spectrum because that's what we would go into the lab and that's what we would get. So let's start with the data and then we're going to drill down and tear apart the spectrum until we get to the wave function.